Welcome to the 6th Plymouth District Candidate Forum for State Representative. I'm Julie Thompson, your host. I want to take a moment to thank our candidates for participating in this forum and bringing this informational programming to residents and voters this election season. First, I want to explain the format. Tonight, the two candidates from the state representative for the 6th Plymouth District, incumbent Representative Josh Cutler and Tatiana Semirag, will be participating. Each candidate will be introduced in alphabetical order. They will have two minutes to introduce themselves and speak about who they are, why they're running for this elected office, as well as describing their qualifications for the position. The candidates will then be asked a series of questions related to state and local issues. They will have up to three minutes to answer each question. After, there will be a post-response, a point-counterpoint, if you will, where the candidates can interact with each other, given a maximum of two minutes. Candidates will be hearing the questions for the first time and will not receive coaching or information to assist in answering. They appear alone in the studio. Members of their campaign staff are not present in the room. The forum will close with each candidate having the opportunity to make closing remarks. Closing remarks will also be held to a three-minute time frame. This will not be a debate per se, but rather an opportunity for the candidates to let voters know who they are and where they stand on certain issues. Thank you. Ready to begin? Yes. Okay. We'll start with the opening statements. Mr. Cutler, you're up first and you have three minutes. Great. Well, thank you, Julie. Uh, thank you, PAC TV. I thank you, Ms. Semrog, for, uh, for being here today. Um, I'm the current state representative. I'm serving in my fourth term. I really love my job. I believe in public service. This has been uh, certainly the most challenging, but also the most rewarding term that I've served, and it's because a lot of people need help. I'm very proud that Massachusetts leads the nation in, in so many areas, public education, health care, biotech, energy efficiency, veterans benefits, marriage equality, just to name a few. But obviously there's still more work to be done, and with COVID-19, it's, it's, it's more important than ever that we have a, an effective, uh, experienced state representative advocating for us. I'm running for re-election because I want to continue to use my experience to help solve problems and make sure that our district remains a great place to live, work, and raise a family. I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm originally from Duxbury. I now live in Pembroke. I have a small business in Hanson. I graduated from Skidmore College. Uh, went to law school at night at Suffolk. And I more recently uh, earned a, an environment, excuse me, a master's degree in environmental policy from UMass Dartmouth. Before serving in the legislature, I worked in local government uh, I was served on the Duxbury Planning Board for four years, on the Alternative Energy Committee for 10 years, on the Duxbury War Memorial Committee. The Duxbury uh, is currently serving on the Duxbury Free Library Inc. Board for the past 10 years. Also a member of the Hanson Kiwanis Foundation, the Pembroke Chamber, Duxbury Business Association. And before moving back to Duxbury, I served on the Hall Board of Selectmen for three years. In my current role as a state representative for Pembroke, Duxbury, and Hanson, I serve on the Ways and Means Committee, the Telecommunications and Energy Committee, and the Higher Education Committee, which are all important policy areas. I'm the House Chair of the Coastal Caucus, and I'm proud to be leading this term an initiative on workforce development for persons with disabilities. I'm also a member and the past chair of the Plymouth County Legislative Caucus, which is a, a bipartisan group of South Shore lawmakers uh, here in the South Shore. And when I'm not doing all that or uh, hanging out with my kids, I enjoy photography, history, writing, and, and, and road races, although I'll have to admit, I'm not in great road race shape lately, but uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I look forward to having a, a good discussion, and I thank PAC TV for hosting this forum. Thank you. Ms. Simarong, you have up to three minutes for your opening statement. Thank you, Julie and PAC TV. Thank you, Mr. Cutler, for giving me the opportunity to stand here today and present myself. My name is Tatiana Simarong. I am an inventor and an entrepreneur. I'm also a mom, a widow, and a cancer survivor. I had breast cancer. The same week that I was diagnosed with cancer, I lost my beloved husband into a, a, in a horrible car crash four years ago. And uh, so all these tragedies that happened to me truly made me a survivor and an inspiration to many. My family also survived severe persecution in the former Soviet Union for many generations. We came here in America in 1988. My family brought me here as a little girl with my seven siblings. And we came to Springfield, Massachusetts to start our new life. My great grandfather was severely persecuted in, uh, during, Stalin, during Stalin and uh, consequently uh, we did as well. He was serving 20 years in the labor camps for believing in God. Two of his brothers were 
executed on the spot because they, the KGB found Bibles in their homes. So we came to America for the freedom that we heard about. As a little girl growing up in Russia and hearing these stories about my family, I dreamed of a place where I could live and pursue my dreams and be able to share my dreams and live in freedom. And when we came here to Springfield, Massachusetts, it is in this beautiful state that I first breathed the air of freedom. I was reborn in this country and it's, it gave me everything. It gave me my life uh, and, and opportunities to graduate uh, with a degree in, in uh, political science. I also worked for a few uh, members of, of the U.S. Congress, including Senator Scott Brown. And now I decided to pursue this uh, and make a difference for the 6th Plymouth District here on the South Shore. You know, um, tw uh, a year ago, my 12-year-old daughter came home from, from Dugsbury Middle School and said, Mama, please don't tell anyone that we are conservative. And that really scared me. That's what inspired me to throw in my hat and say, I cannot sit idly by. And I really think that um, this district deserves fair representation and uh, every voice needs to be heard, including conservative voices. We are quite an independent district uh, here on the South Shore and we need proper representation and that's, this, that is why I'm running. Thank you. Question one. It's going to be followed by a response time for each candidate. In the current political climate, from the local to the national level, we are seeing much divisiveness. How, as a state representative, would you address the polarization that we see in our communities? <coughs> Ms. Semerog, you will go first. You have three minutes. Yes, uh, Julie, that's a great question. It breaks my heart, the division that I see across our nation, across our state, and even in this district, even sometimes among my friends and relatives. It is... Um, painful to watch us being ripped apart uh, by, the, by the media, truly, um, that is dividing up, uh, us up into classes, labeling us uh, certain names that are unfair. And I am here to address that and say, this has to stop. I've been uh, labeled and ostracized for some of my political beliefs including by my opponent's uh, close people on social media. His own partners, uh, Becky Coletta's husband, has tied me with President Putin, somebody from um, uh, who, whose regime I fled and under whose regime I suffered persecution. And I, I challenge, I challenge the media, the press, to... Uh, really try and represent all points of views and that I believe will heal us and bring us together because nobody should be labeled for, for their political beliefs, for where they stand, for their skin color, for their gender. If we are going to say that everyone's lives <coughs> matter, then let's include everyone, including our police who are being uh, marginalized right now, attacked, dishonored and mocked. And that has to stop. If, if all lives matter, they really, truly should matter. Thank you. Mr. Cutler, would you like me to repeat the question? If you don't mind. <laughs> sure. Here is the question. In the current political climate, from the local to the national level, we're seeing much divisiveness. How, as a state representative, would you address polarization that we see in our communities? Yeah, I know. Thank you for that. You have three minutes. And I, I would say it's, it's really a tale of two cities, if, if I could. I think you have Washington, D.C., where division, uh, unfortunately, I think it comes from the White House primarily, but certainly both parties share in that blame. And, uh, but, and, and then you have Boston, and where we uh, govern here in Massachusetts. And we have divided government. We have a legislature that's dominated by the Democratic Party, and we have a Republican governor. And yet we found a way to work together and to build consensus. And, you know, we don't always agree on every issue, but we work together. Uh, thank you for pointing me to the right camera. We work together um, to try to solve problems. And I think you know, this, the, the nation could learn from what we're doing here in Massachusetts, where we have Democrats and Republicans working together to solve issues. I, I think, it bring, bring it back home, I think about my colleagues here in the South Shore that I've worked with on both sides of the aisle. Worked with uh, my, colleague, my good colleague from, from Plymouth on a, a paratransit ride services for the disabled. Worked from a, a good colleague in, in uh, Hanover on 
on uh, the North River issues and 40B projects, worked with um, the leader of the uh, Republicans in the House on my uh, Energy Save Act. So I think there's plenty of examples we can point to here in Massachusetts where we have bridge that divide and work together. Certainly we're not perfect, I don't think anyone is, but I think we, we have a good track record and I think my own track record is very good and that's why um, you know, local leaders in, in all the communities of, of all pol political stripes are supporting me. They understand that I'm about results and, and getting the job done and I'm not focused just on partisanship. So I think um, that's an important question that you ask and I think it's, it's a core part of who I am. Fundamentally I believe that this job and politics should be about addition and not division. Okay, thank you. Now we're going to give each of you um, two minutes for a response. So Ms. Um, Summerog, you have two minutes to respond to Mr. Cutler. Well, um, I'm glad to hear your, your slogan of addition, not division. I, I wish that uh, perhaps uh, a, you could be a voice for some of the division that I'm seeing happening in your own district. Uh, I've now walked uh, all three towns, door to door, 5,500 5, doors knocked. And let me tell you, the folks in this district are, are upset. They feel betrayed. They feel like your voice is lacking to bring everyone together. Um, your vote to defund the police has certainly divided um, your community. And... Gosh, I would love to see more addition because all I'm seeing based on what you've done so far is division, division, division. There's very little representation of the true voices of your district. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Cutler, you have two minutes to respond. Sure. I, well, I, I, I just don't think that's the facts back that up. But um, if you look at, at people in, in my communities who I represent, uh, the chairman of the Whitman Hanson School Committee, a lifelong Republican. He's supporting me. Members of the Duxbury Planning Board, Republicans are supporting me. People understand that I do work uh, across party aisles and, you know, work to find solutions and, and, find, and, and, and solve problems. And, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a divider. I'm sorry if, if, if you feel that way. I don't think that's my track record. I think I have a lengthy track record uh, in four terms of serving these three communities in a way that uh, works to bring people together. And uh, so I'm very proud of my track record and happy to, happy to talk about it. Not according to the constituents I spoke to. Okay, this was Ms. Mr. Cutler's two minutes. Oh, okay, apologies. we're going to now move on to the second question. What do you feel are the top three most relevant issues that need to be addressed right now? Mr. Cutler, we're going to start with you, and you have three minutes. Sure, well, my, my you know, three priorities in general uh, are, are the three E's, I guess. Uh, education, economic development, and, and energy and climate issues. I think those are the three core issues that... Um, that I've worked a great deal on in the legislature and I think that are important to our, uh, us today and also in the future. Uh, in terms of education, I've been uh, fighting for school funding, fighting for changes in our school funding formula through Chapter 70. We passed a landmark Student Opportunity Act uh, last year to bring more m dollars back to our cities and towns in, in, in education, specifically for special needs children, which I think is, is vital. Um, we've been working uh, through COVID. I know it's been a struggle for many school districts. We've been working. We had great news. Our Ways and Means Committee recently um, had made uh, the decision to, to make sure that we weren't going to see any cuts to local aid for our cities and towns. I'm proud to serve on that committee and, and be a role in doing that and making sure that we're going to continue to send uh, dollars back to our cities and towns to protect our schools and our other core services. So uh, education, economic development. Uh, I used to run a small business. I, I, I think that's uh, vital part of the, the economy here in the South Shore, supporting our small businesses, workforce development. I've been working this term on an initiative, as I mentioned, to uh, try to remove hurdles for people who have disabilities to uh, succeed in the workforce. Um, you know, we have, um, before COVID, we had one of the lowest unemployment rates in history. Obviously, now that's changed a bit, and we need to do a lot to get back to where we were. And so I have the experience working in those issues to do that. And then finally, uh, energy and climate issues. I think, you know, we live here in a coastal area, and even if, even if you don't live in a coastal town, uh, we're all impacted by climate change. Uh, we see it, you know, talk to the shell fishermen in, in Duxbury Bay who are, you know, experiencing new strains of bacteria because the ocean waters are getting more acidic and, and, we, and because of global warming. It's affecting their pocketbook. So these aren't just, uh, you know, issues for our planet. They're issues that affect our wallet. And uh, I've been a leader in terms of trying to address climate change. I have legislation, uh, my Energy Save Act, uh, which has uh, earned bipartisan support, which was recently approved in the House 
uh, proud to have the, actually the head of the Republican Party in the, in the House uh, as a co-sponsor. We've worked on it together. Um, so I think those are, the, those are the three issues that are important to me, that are central to me, education, uh, economic development, helping our business community, and energy policy. Obviously, COVID-19 is trumping everything right now, and we need to do whatever we can to help folks, and that's what I've been doing for the last uh, nine, six to nine months. So, uh, but those are the issues I think are very, vitally important for us. Okay, thank you. Ms. Uh, Ms. Semarag, you also have three minutes to talk about your three most relevant issues. Yes, my number one issue is public safety. And I base this uh, as my number one priority due, again, to the fact that I've spoken, actually spoken to the voters door to door and heard them. And their number one concern is public safety. They watch the news every day and people are scared. They're scared to see what's happening in their country, in their own state, and the fact that a vote was taken in July to, I know my opponent doesn't like to call it, defund the police, but really, it's a, it's a bill that would hurt our police officers by taking away their qualified immunity. That is my number one concern because it touches directly upon the safety and well-being of this district. It is such an important and vital issue due to the fact that three, all three of the um, uh, uh, police departments in each town are spectacular. Spectacular chiefs, spectacular officers, and so many of them are telling me door to door again that they want to hang up their uniforms, that they want to take early retirement because of this bill. And they are angry and upset and feel betrayed and if they the police officers do do th those things such as they what they did in Rochester when when the whole department walked off the job wow how is that going to impact our communities and our safety <clears throat> it is my number one concern um, I've spoken to a woman who cried on my shoulder and said my brother is a police officer why is his son um, wondering why is my daddy an enemy now and she's crying and I cried with her and held her it is devastating this bill is devastating and my opponent vo voted for it and I think it's despicable now um, we need to honor our men and women in blue not defend them defund not defund defend not defund uh, very quickly, Julie, I will say that economic recovery is very important for me as well. Uh, you know, I'm great to hear that you think that you've done a great job, Mr. Cutler, on some of your uh, economic uh, decisions. However, the TCI tax that you just voted to raise during the highest unemployment in the nation, in this state, is also despicable. Seriously, we're trying to recover after a devastating pandemic and to be taxed at the gas pump is, is unfathomable to me. We need to recover. Our small businesses are relying on that. In this district, there are so many families who have been devastated and taxing them is not an option. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cutler, you have two minutes for a response. Sure. Well, I, I appreciate this. Ms. Semirog has some strong feelings on this, and she's certainly entitled to her, her, own, certain, her own opinions, but she's not entitled to her own facts. And uh, the, the legislature has not defunded police. To the contrary. In fact, uh, I voted for an additional revenue source dedicated to municipal police training, uh, which was opposed by some of our most conservative colleagues. Uh, I have myself advocated and passed amendments that have actually brought more funds back to our cities and towns directly for police. Uh, $50,000 for the Pembroke Police to, uh, to have uh, emergency gear and training, $25,000 to uh, buy a utility terrain vehicle, funding for the Pembroke, excuse me, for the uh, Hanson Police Department to uh, get new mobile communication radios, funding for the uh, Duxbury Fire Department jointly with Marshfield to get a mobile dewatering pump. Those are just some examples. I think, you know, we're having a, there's a broader issue at play here as a sort of a national conversation that's happening. And I would agree in one respect in that um, I think our law enforcement does a fantastic job here on the South Shore and really in, in Massachusetts. Uh, we have great departments. We have great chiefs. Uh, I've worked with them uh, on many occasions. Uh, and I think they do a great job. I think there's also a need to look at policing reform and accountability. Uh, I'm an attorney. I'm licensed. I have to uh, you know, do certain things uh, every year to renew my license. 
Uh, Massachusetts is one of four states that does not have a licensing certification process for police officers. And that's what the legislation that the House passed is really all about, um, changing that and bringing some important reforms, while also respecting and honoring the many great women in law enforcement. And I would, I would definitely agree that we're very fortunate here in Massachusetts that we have an educated and very talented uh, law enforcement community. So I certainly would never do anything to defund police. I don't support ending qualified immunity. I'm disappointed that um, my positions are being, frankly, just uh, misconstrued. Okay, thank you. Simarag, you will have up to two minutes for a response. So, Mr. Cutler, what you're saying is that before you were against the police, you were for the police. I appreciate all the things that you have uh, done for our departments previous to this despicable vote that happened in December. Uh, I mean, in July. Uh, good for you, but uh, you know what you did in that bill truly is. You, it's a bill that would reallocate uh, funds to other uh, and stream them to other departments and I, I, under, I understand maybe there is needed to, uh, to be some sort of a reform or you know whatever whatever that might be needed for our police departments but why take funds away from them get them somewhere else you did this bill together with other Democrats on, on, on Beacon Hill um, behind closed doors without consulting the uh, the uh, experts on this matter and uh, pushed it through uh, you know, and betrayed all the police officers. And let me tell you, the Pembroke Police Union voted unanimously to endorse me. The Hanson Police Union voted unanimously to endorse me. The Mass Cops Union, the biggest union of police officers in the state, just voted to endorse me. Now, why is it that if it's not defunding, as you like to call, why is it that the police officers feel that it is? Why is it that they want to hang up their uniforms because of this bill? If you're saying that I'm misconstruing mis my facts. Uh, I trust the police officers more than I trust an eight-year politician and a lawyer. I trust those who come to my door when I'm in trouble to save me. That is who I trust. Um, I, I think that... <clears throat> I think that this is a very important matter that you need to own. You need to own this vote instead of deflecting and backpedaling. Thank you very much. Our next uh, question is the third question. In the two-year term of a state representative, your responsibilities, among other things, is to introduce bills and resolutions, offer amendments, and serve on committees. Some of your duties have a direct impact on your constituents. What would you focus on to support the members of the communities you serve that would have a positive effect on their lives? We're going to begin with Ms. Simarag. You have three minutes. Yes. Well, thank you, Julie. I believe that uh, the next two years after we overcome this pandemic, and I do believe that we will, I believe that the next two years uh, need to be focused full force upon the recovery of our economy, our small businesses. I will introduce bills that will help recover um, some of the businesses that have been devastated, our restaurants, our hair salons, all the small businesses that are in my district, uh, I hope to, to be, obviously, uh, I hope to help them. I also feel like our schools have been hit. You know, so many teachers have been laid off because of COVID. And uh, we need to expand our Chapter 70 uh, more. I understand uh, my opponent says that he's done a lot for, for it. I don't think he did enough. There's more that he could have done uh, with expanding uh, Chapter 70. So another bill that I would introduce absolutely would be to help our law enforcement, our firefighters, our first responders uh, even further. I've talked to police uh, departments and fire uh, departments and uh, they've given me some of their needs um, that uh, directly impact them. We need more safety, <laughs> not less. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Cutley, you have three minutes. Yeah, so I think the role of a state representative is, is really three things. One is constituent service. I think that's probably the, the most important thing and especially right now there's frankly a lot of people that need help and people that uh, you know are having trouble whether it's uh, unemployment, running their small business, uh, essential workers. Uh, and they need someone who they can turn to who can solve problems and, and direct them. And, and, and I've been that person, and I'm proud of the many people that we've been able to help uh, throughout my career, but especially 
uh, since COVID hit over the last six months. So I think that's number one. Fighting for our share of uh, state resources. I think that's vitally important. Again, I've shown a track record of, of delivering local aid back to our district uh, through budget amendments, through working with my colleagues across the aisle. Um, so I think that's very important to make sure we're getting our fair share of state resources here on the South Shore. And finally, you know, being a leader on important issues uh, that are important to not just our district, but to our Commonwealth. Um, you know, I've tried to, to be that person uh, you know, on climate issues. I'm uh, the lead sponsor of the Energy Save Act to try to uh, improve the energy, energy efficiency of our, our regular appliances. Glad to have bipartisan support on that legislation. We just passed that bill in the House. Uh, I've done a lot of work this term on issues impacting folks with disabilities, trying to break down barriers and make it easier for people who have disabilities to succeed and flourish in the workforce. Proud of the ability to pass Nikki's law to uh, set up a, a registry to to prevent um, d abusive caretakers from harming our persons with disabilities. So these are all examples, I think, of um, working together and uh, leading on issues that are important to all of us. I did, while I have a moment, just wanted to come back because my opponent continues to misrepresent the facts um, on defunding police uh, on, on a whole host of things. Uh, and I congratulate you on your endorsements. I, that's, that's great. I'm, I'm happy to work with our local police, whether they support uh, you, you or me, but I do want to, for the record, let folks know that I'm glad to have the support of uh, the AFL-CIO, the Mass Teachers Association, the Mass Nurses Association, Iron Workers Local 7, Laborers Local 133, the Carmen Union, the Mass Voters for Animals, Mass Organization of State Engineers and Scientists, uh, IBEW Local 104, Massachusetts and New England Laborers District Council, Teamsters Local 25, Local 4 Operating Engineers, and I may have missed a couple, uh, as well as, as I mentioned already, proud to have the support of uh, a number of Republican elected office holders here in our district. So um, I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Semerov, you now have two minutes to um, respond. Yes, uh, those are all great endorsements and they all come from the typical unions. It is not typical for law enforcement unions to endorse a Republican and they have indeed endorsed me. Another one that I missed is Makufu, which is the Correctional Officers Union who also voted to endorse me. And I, I applaud you on your experience, Mr. Cutler. Uh, you've done a, uh, a great job, it seems. But I, I do want to remind everyone, and you including, Mr. Cutler, that, that everything that you've accomplished is literally your job. It's, it's your job. And I'm, I guess you did it well. Uh, I think I will do an even better job. I will uh, certainly go even more further than that. Um, so... Uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. You were just, you were just responding to what he said. Y yeah. To his answer. So, so yeah. Again, I'll, I'll guess I'll just repeat it. That good job on your on, on all your service. I, I guess uh, there's a lot to say about uh, all of your accomplishments, and you re you actually released the flyer where community leaders praise you and oh you're so wonderful and you're so great and that's great. I'm sure you that made you feel good. But you know what, talking to constituents, if you would take the time to talk to constituents, not some of the leaders who are in your back pocket, you would see that they're not happy and they would not release the statement some, that some of your friends did. So um, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, Mr. Cutley, you have two minutes to respond. <laughs> I'll just say I don't think that our nurses and teachers and others are, are, are the typical unions. Uh, but I do thank you for complimenting me on the great job that I've done. We're now going to move on to question number four. Of all the committees that you could serve on as a state representative, <clears throat> which ones do you think would have the most impact on your district? Each candidate is going to have three minutes to answer, and Mr. Cutler, you will go first. Sure. Well, I, I am the state representative, and I do serve on some important committees. In fact, I serve on, on the most critical committee, which is the Ways and Means Committee, uh, which has to, uh, to do with our state budget and uh, formulating our state budget, which is the, probably the key thing we do as, as a state lawmaker is, uh, is passing a budget. Obviously, this, this, this year has been especially difficult, uh, but I'm proud to be, to be able to play a voice and play a role in crafting that state budget. And as I, I mentioned earlier, earlier, just, just a short time ago, um, last month, we, as a Ways and Means Committee, made the important, the important commitment to our cities and towns that even during this era of COVID, even during this time when we're experiencing you know, some dramatic shortfalls in our budget and, and, and unsure what's going to happen in Washington, D.C., we made a commitment to our cities and towns that we're going to hold harmless any cuts to Chapter 70 and to unrestricted general government aid, which is sometimes referred to as lottery aid. And so um, 
that is an important commitment to our cities and towns that um, we're going to protect local aid and do everything we possibly can to, uh, to make sure that we don't have to see these kinds of cuts at our local level. So I'm very proud of that. I'm proud to be a member of the Ways and Means Committee, proud to have the support of uh, the members on the Ways and Means Committee. And actually, I had for the first time ever in the history of our district, er earlier this year, before COVID, uh, we actually hosted a Ways and Means Committee hearing right here in my district at the Duxbury Senior Center that had never happened before in the history of our, our seat. And that's because of, of the, the, the fact that I sit on that committee and I built the relationships frankly, across the aisle, Democrats and Republicans, I've built those relationships and respect of my colleagues and was given the honor of hosting that uh, hearing right here in our district. So I think that speaks to um, the um, experience that I can bring to this role. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Semarag, yeah. you have uh, three minutes to talk about the committees that you would serve on. Yeah, um, thank you. I would also like, uh, if elected, to be on the Ways and Means Committee. Frankly, um, uh, hearing that my opponent has been on this committee, I, I, I'm surprised he didn't do more. If it's such a, it, it is indeed a powerful committee, and I think a lot more he could have done being on that committee. Uh, okay. Another one that I would love to be on is the Community Development and Small Businesses Committee. I think uh, with uh, the de economic devastation due to this pande pandemic, we really need. Uh, to have a strong voice advocating for the small businesses that have been devastated across our district. And uh, I hope to have that assignment as well. And the last one is the Public Safety Committee. I really want to serve on that one to make sure that our police officers are in good shape to help continue to protect us and uh, be there uh, and absolutely stand against any kind of defunding. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cutley, you have two minutes for a response. Sure. Well, I, I would agree. I think those are good committees. I think those are some smart choices. I was actually the vice chair of the Community Development and Small Business Committee my last term, so I certainly understand that. And uh, I actually serve in the same suite as our Public Safety Committee. Uh, and in fact, the, the chairman of the Public Safety Committee just uh, endorsed me. So I think those are some good committees. Um, I, I didn't mention I, I got, uh, was talking about Ways and Means Committee, but I, I do want to just quickly mention that I also serve on the Telecommunications and Energy Committee, which is an important one, obviously, for uh, a whole host of issues, telecommunications, energy policy. It's a wide swath. Uh, and also serve uh, on the Higher Education Committee, and I think that's been especially important this term. Uh, in fact, we passed an important bill earlier this term on our Higher, ed higher Education Committee to give uh, more details and more tools to parents when they're doing shopping with their, with their students for different colleges about the financial health of, of, their, of their colleges. Because we've seen, sadly, that some schools, this is pre-COVID, were closing quite abruptly and leaving students out in the lurch. And so we wanted to make sure that when students are making decisions about which college to attend, they know about the great algebra and the great biology uh, department, but also they understand a little bit more about the financial health of the college. So we passed an important bill this year to help uh, improve that. Um, obviously, now we're dealing with a lot of COVID-related issues in higher education. And again, my experience uh, in, in my relationships with the chairman of that committee, uh, Jeff Roy, a good close friend of mine, are important and help. And frankly, you know, it's about relationships up at the State House and having the respect of your peers. I think I've earned that respect. And then that, uh, I put that to work for all of us here on the, in the South Shore. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Simarag, <laughs> you have two minutes for response. Thanks. So I'm glad to hear that you work closely with somebody in the Public Safety Committee. Uh, as such, uh, I have a special message to you from a group of police officers that I spoke with and who've endorsed me. Their question is, what did we do to deserve the vote that you took in July to defund them? That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are now going to our final question. Each candidate will have up to two minutes for their remarks, and we will not have a response time after this question. And here it is. What have you learned about your opponent in this race so far, and even in this forum, that you did not know beforehand? We're going to start with Ms. Semarag. Thank you, Julie. Welcome. So when I decided to run um, last year, I knew nothing about my opponent. I was so concerned with uh, the political climate in my town and this, in this state due to the fact that my daughter uh, was afraid of being bullied in school for being a conservative. And I knew nothing about my opponent when I decided to do this. And I, uh, since then, uh, decided to <laughs> not just read about him, but also hear what his own constituents say about him. And uh, as I mentioned before, I have now knocked on 5,500 doors, door to door, and uh, in all three 
towns. And I could tell you from their mouths that they are very displeased. They're very upset. They feel betrayed. They feel like they need, need new representation, someone who will truly represent their point of view and not the point of view of the speaker, not the point of view of the party majority, definitely not vote uh, uh, to put their safety in jeopardy. People are very angry. And um, Mr. Cutler, I know you, we, you have a, a child that is the same age as my middle child. And um, I, I suppose you're a great family man, but uh, from what I'm hearing from the constituents in your district at every door is very disheartening. And uh, I'm ready to take on that role to be a true representation, representative of every voice in this district. Thank you, Mr. Cutler. You have two minutes. The question was? Uh, what have you learned uh, about your oh, opponent you. that you did not know up till now or even in this debate? Well, I, I haven't got to know my opponent that well. I think uh, COVID uh, has uh, impacted our ability to, to campaign uh, in, in person as much. So I look forward to getting to know her. Um, I, I do try to, you know, my philosophy on these things, I, I, I agree with uh, what Pr President Lincoln said. I'll, I'm sure I'll botch the, the phrase, but the best way to destroy your enemies is to befriend them. And I, I try to work with everyone. Uh, I've worked with some of my former opponents. In fact, I helped to pass a bill uh, this past term with one of my former Republican opponents. Uh, so I, I do feel strongly about that. Obviously, it sounds like she has some very strong feelings about me. I'm, sad, I'm sorry that uh, that's the case. Uh, I'm sorry that she's choosing to be so divisive. I'm going to not go there. I'm just going to keep a positive campaign. I think we have a lot of positive accomplishments that we've done for the district, working together, uh, Democrats and Republicans, independents, trying to do good things, uh, bringing resources back to our cities and towns. Uh, and i just quickly address policing reform. I think, I think we do need some policing reform. Uh, I think uh, to call it defunding police is just factually wrong. It's not the case. Uh, in fact, we've added funds for police, so that is not the case. I'm sad that uh, some folks believe that. I'm sad that others are trying to, to spread that misinformation. Um, so, you know, I think there's a lot of good things. Uh, I'm going to campaign in a positive way. I'm not going to get in the mud, uh, but I, I do appreciate uh, the, the spirited energy that my opponent has brought to the race. I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Candidates, we are now going to give you three minutes for your closing <laughs> remarks. Feel free to speak directly to your camera and address your voters and constituents. Mr. Cutler, you are first. You have three minutes. Great. Well, thank you very much, Julie. Thank you, PAC TV, for hosting this forum. Thank you to my opponent for joining me here for a spirited race. Uh, it's truly an honor to serve in this role. Uh, this has been the greatest professional honor of my career. I've lived in this district for, for more than 30 years. This is my home. Every day I work to make sure it remains a great place to live, work, and raise a family. I'm running again because I want to use my experience to help us move forward. I'm proud to be someone who looks for solutions, works to build bridges, and works with people of all political stripes. Every day there are important decisions being made on Beacon Hill, decisions about our economy, our schools, health care, local aid, our climate, decisions that affect our quality of life right here on the South Shore. And no doubt it's going to be a challenging time, but it's important that we respect our public health experts, that we focus on economic recovery and help our business community. As your state representative, I've worked very hard to make sure your voice is heard, to make sure that our district gets the resources we need, to make sure that we stand up for those who need a voice. With your support, we can continue that work together. I'll put my experience to work for us, my track record as a consensus builder and as a problem solver, my communication skills and small business background, my ability to work across the aisle with the legislature and also with Governor Baker. I'll put that experience to work for us. Fundamentally, I'll say it again, I believe this job and our politics should be about addition and not division. If you share that vision, if you appreciate the good work that I've done for our community and want to see that continue, I would be honored to earn your vote. Whether you vote early, whether you vote by mail, or whether you vote on election day on Tuesday, November 3rd. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Simarag, you have uh, three minutes for your closing statement. Well, certainly um, your vote, your votes have been very divisive and not very, as you say, addition or inclusive. But I will uh, 
I digress. I will talk about a very monu uh, monumental town that this is, Plymouth, Massachusetts, where we are today. Just uh, in this town, a little ways away, is Plymouth Rock, and that is where pilgrims landed when they were escaping tyranny many centuries ago. Massachusetts, for me, is the cradle of liberty. Here, I took my first breaths of freedom. I was reborn in this country, and I love it. I love uh, the American dream that it gave me, and I want to preserve that American dream for my three little girls. I feel like it's under attack. I feel like uh, relentlessly on Beacon Hill with the tyrannical majority of which my opponent is a part of, our freedoms are being chipped away more and more. I am standing up to say that this cannot happen on my watch. I have seen firsthand where the policies that my opponent votes for, where they take a country. It devastates a nation over and over again across uh, the world, including my birth country of Russia. And votes such as defunding the police, such as increasing our tax uh, during a pandemic is not a good thing. It is quite divisive and it will only serve to hurt us. And I promise that as your state representative, I will have every single voice in my district in mind when I create policies and when I also hope to work across the aisle to bring true representation of uh, uh, 6th Plymouth District. Oh, and uh, I have one minute. I do want to mention a little song called uh, Winds of Change. It's by the Scorpions. It was written in 1990 uh, when uh, Ronald Reagan, the best president uh, in this country for me, uh, when he said, Mr. Gorbachev, bring down that wall. And the Berlin Wall fell and freedom came. It was the most magical moment in the 20th century. And there's a lyric in there that I want to bring attention to. It says, Take me to the magic of the moment on a glory night where the children of tomorrow share their dreams. As a little girl growing up in Russia, I couldn't share my dreams, but I, can sh I sh uh, was able to share them when I came here. And I want um, for my children to continue to be able to share their dreams as they're growing up and not be afraid. For my daughters to not be afraid of being bullied and ostracized for believing what, what uh, they believe. I never hope that America would ever uh, turn back Thank you. to... <laughs> your, your time. Oh, all right? Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you both for participating in this Bye. forum. We wish you both the best of luck throughout the campaign and in the election. For our viewers, thank you for joining us. If you wish to watch this forum again, visit pactv.org slash election for replay times on PACTV's channels and on YouTube. And please make your choices heard by voting in the general election on Tuesday, November 3rd. Thank you and good day.